Welcome back. This is Classic Valley Investors and Microcap Explosions. I'm Marius Skonieczny. Another video in the video series, Why I Hate the Mining Stocks. In this video, we are talking about Midway Gold. And I don't really have videos. I like videos showing you what was promised in the past. I don't have any videos for this company. But Midway Gold in 2015 was probably the hottest stock out there and uh, there's a lot of companies i admire but uh you know a company similar to ours uh maybe just a little bit bigger and a little bit behind us right now would be like midway gold uh ken brunk uh it's a you know good ceo i think they got a good plan uh, I, I, I admire them and, and I looked into it. I didn't invest into it. And by the time I looked into it, it was already, you know, it already went bust, but everybody was talking about it. Everybody, there was coverage from so many analysts. It was such a hot stock, such a no brainer. And because it had so much experience behind it, the CEO was I believe the former Newmont's, he ran Newmont's worldwide operations. Unbelievable experience. And so here it is to you guys think that great management is not going to make mistakes. When you are in this business, this is a risky business. And if you have an asset with problems and you have a situation where the company is over leveraged and then the lenders don't want to uh, negotiate or the investors don't want to give it more capital, the game is over. So the story behind Midway Gold was that the, it was about a pen property. So Midway Gold acquired pen in 2017 and it was a, a property in Nevada and through skillful exploration, it expanded the resource significantly. At the end of 2011, the company had a mining plan. And in December 2013, the project received a full permit. And in September 2014, mining operations started. And then uh, in March of 2015, Midway Gold announced the completion of its first gold pour. And you see, the reason why people were so excited about Midway Gold, other than the fact that there was so much uh, management expertise, was because the PEN's cash flow potential, according to the feasibility study, gold at PEN was supposed to be produced at less than $600 per ounce. And, uh, you know, fully loaded all-in cash costs were about 825 dollars per ounce making it one of the one of the low cost producers and the, the project was supposed to generate about 80,000 ounces of gold and so this would translate into uh, 50 million uh, of cash flows from operations uh, assuming the gold price of only uh, 1200 and as you know these people that were in gold it was just a matter of time before gold was going to be as high or higher as it is today so just to give you an idea of you know let's take the price of gold of 1700 minus let's just even do all full in costs so uh, almost $900 per ounce and you're talking about 80,000 per year, $70 million of cash flow from operations. I mean, people were talking about that it was going to be worth uh, 500 million or 2 billion. Yeah, so it makes sense. Because it was such a hot project, uh, the company had no problem raising money. Okay, it, uh, for example, uh, Midway Gold ha had no trouble attracting suitors. Uh, to help finance its flagship pen mine. 
In 2012, Midway convinced New York-based private equity firm Halle Capital Partners to invest $70 million in the company in exchange for becoming the lead shareholder. Then two years later, Midway secured another $25 million through a bought deal financing. And in May 2014, the company cut a deal with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, which provided fi financing of $55 million uh, in the form of debt. You see, in mining, the moment you can get debt financing, which means your property has enough work done on it to convince the bank to give you the loans, they will go with the bank debt. The problem is that when something goes wrong, that debt is going to kill you. And that's exactly what happened with Midway. You see, what happened with Midway was that uh, there was the biggest issue was a great discrepancy. You see, they thought, based on the feasibility studies and all the other studies, they thought that the grade was 0.44 grams per ton. But what they ended up getting was 0.3 grams per ton, which is a huge difference. Because you see, in mining, what you have is you are uh, mining and processing a, a ton of rock, okay? And it costs you a certain amount to mine it and to process it no matter what you have inside, right? So if you have 0.4 grams per ton, you're going to get a certain revenue in relation to what you spent on mining and processing the ton. But if you, instead of having 0.44 grams per ton, if you have 0.3 grams per ton, it's a game changer. So how can this be even possible for the feasibility study to say that you have this, this much of gold and then you, you find out that you have much less? Welcome to mining. This is the reality. And it doesn't matter how much experience the management has, who backs them, whether it's Sprat, Landin, when there's a problem, there's a problem. And no matter how big your heart is or how smart you are, nothing is going to help. On June 22nd, 2015, Midway Gold declared bankruptcy. And anybody who has been invested in the company's stock lost all the money. The stock went to zero, even though some of the smartest people in industry were involved in it. So this is, this is not as complete video as the other ones because I don't have a nice projections and nice promises, but this was a very, very interesting situation because everybody was so hot on it. The smartest people on the planet were in the, from the industry were amazingly bullish on the story and the stock ended up going to zero. Thanks for watching and have a good day.